The beginning is always subtle. Corridors, floors, glistening with some uh, else's well, suit. Okay, interviews, interviews, right? Yeah. Uh, for uh, yeah, for the 2024 lineup in Umbra. So um, first of all, uh, welcome, and to tell you that uh, the team in Umbra and also the community now that we have made the announcement are excited to to see you on the lineup. We are as well. So uh, yeah. Yeah. yes, well. That's when I realized it began. I heard of it, and um, I guess four contents. I, I, I met for content. He's an, he's an actor. I guess maybe you know him. He's, I guess also from Spain, and we met two years ago. And then I saw him playing there, and actually this was the um, moment when I got when you got to Ombra. <laughs> yeah, and then I kind of meet Ombra and recognize oh, but there's a lot of cool artists there and the cool scene and yeah. There, are, yeah. Actually, that year was also my first song, and I remember for Cantons. Yeah. Ah, funny. Okay, he played live, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. mostly everyone was playing live uh, in, the, in the operator stage. Yeah. I know you have a new world, right? As a ah, yeah, right. Cool. You research. <laughs> I made. Yeah, I made my. It's a guilty my... pleasure a project somehow. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I must say, I came from a lot of genres. I was interested in every kind of genre. At, at the end, it's not about the uh, genre. Maybe it's about uh, what you feel through a track, so of through music. That's my thing. And I tried to discover house music around 2010 and until 15, maybe. And then slightly, uh, it's moved forward into broken beats somehow. And then I realized. I would like to ex express more instead of deep warmness or whatever I um, felt comfy in until this time and um, something changed and I felt more it's more exciting and more possibilities more spectrum to tell somehow and it's it's also when you have electro music for example or broken stuff it can be tough at one time, and in the same time, it can be really emotional without getting too cheesy. Some, yeah. for example, if you have if you have house music also, and it's it's and then you have melodies on top. Sometimes it's too much. You have to find find the right amount, I guess. It's machine music with maybe you can put some um, yeah melodic stuff or whatever on top that can like be really feels a bit sad but in the same time the machine stuff feels more it's strong cool. and I like this kind of contrast yes sometimes or it can be just hard um, <laughs> and if I just want to do some emotional stuff that is really cheesy and based on my maybe uh, um, area when I got born in the 80s then I can do this disco new world music okay and can go in there's no limit of, uh, <laughs> of possibilities of expression yeah yeah i guess some people who like interview stuff maybe don't wouldn't like this but um some do but yeah yeah how was it how did it come up what inspired you what uh, gear did you use what equipment Ooh. <laughs> I mean, it's actually, it's uh, 20 years ago, um, so I have to dive deep. First track, I mean, the first track was hip hop. So it's 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I'm 40 now, it started with 15. Okay. So um, long ago, um, we listened like to hip hop. <laughs> we, we did graffiti, we got busted because we were stupid and 14 what? or 15 years and then um, the age of 15. And then I felt like maybe I should um, <laughs> go over to hip hop music and produce instead of doing graffiti. And mm -hmm. um, so my friends started to write um, um, text stuff and I started to produce the music aspect. Okay. So yeah, 
the second thing I'm doing is design and motion design. I got into both worlds. So some, it's, it's switching. And um, for example, if, since I'm in Berlin, um, I feel like more designer tries to uh, work for, to get a rent and at the same time don't lose the contact to music expression uh, that really um, fulfills me. Okay. More than work for money, of course. So I want to express something through musical uh, stuff. And um, yeah. And actually, it's emotion, something that triggers me emotionally, something, something I hear or I feel or I sit on the synths uh, behind me. Then if I play melody, sometimes it triggers something. And then it's uh, the next thing is the beat. Sometimes it's super hard if you have a beat first from a drum machine, and then it's like nice and it's hard to layer something on top. Um, speaking of your uh, drawing, because I saw I saw an old drawing of you on your Instagram page at one point. I found drawing. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, something like an art. Yeah. It yeah, was, was it like a club was, situation where we are Yes, DJing yeah, 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 it was a club was situation. Like, okay. <laughs> no photo yeah. publicity, so I had to find a... Yeah. Is that the hand-drawn or something, or is it digital artwork? It's hand-drawn, yeah. Is it uh, uh, from now, or does it have a background? Uh, past? It has a... I guess I was super... 2017, I started DJing before I was doing live sets and producing music years before and then 2017 I felt like maybe it's cool to start DJing because also the effect of buying records listening to more music on others and 2017 we played in Leipzig in Institut für Zukunft it's IFZ EFZ if you ever heard it it's okay it's a kind of it's in Leipzig where I used to live it's a kind of famous club there and we played there at New Year's evening and there's of course no photo publicity and I was proud that we played there so I painted the drawing situation. Ah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. It's just a memory of the club um, atmosphere I had. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah it's curious because I think uh, around that time that you say I don't know if this was actually 2017 or stuff but mm -hmm. I have also from from my country for example we have an artist who emerged um I think during the pandemics so maybe a couple of years after to, to 2017 but the same he's like special he was a photographer before also a music aficionado and stuff but mm -hmm. he was he now passed to the same like uh, immortalizing crowds from the dance floor from the history of his photographs and he's mm -hmm. putting them into charcoal and stuff and the paintings are, are quite big the drawings uh, he starts to repaint the pictures he did yes. from the people and resting okay. his name is Valerio Catalinano yeah I'm gonna send him send you his uh, you should send me I couldn't remember <laughs> <laughs> For sure you're gonna like it and um, I'm not sure like, the moment he's, but he's also used to draw or he's also a drawer or he started to paint uh, he's a tattoo artist since a longer ah, time okay. so then I think this is a tattoo artist helps to maybe, uh, no, passionate yeah. Yeah, and dedication and yeah he's actually I think he's the only one in the country doing it right now and mm -hmm. I saw some other uh, type of uh, artworks like this Mm, but I don't know if there were, I was I, those ones I saw in Instagram on social media, so I don't know if there are digital or handmade hands. Mm, yeah. Wow. Do you have a favorite? Oui. Yeah, with uh, the uh, art being like oui. uh, digitalized or being done by a human oui. being. Um, I like AI oui. art. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I um, I'm also used to paint back in the days, and then I felt. Like maybe it's cool, cool to do music and all this thing. So I, I know I'm into painting, so of course I like painted stuff or art stuff. Um, stupid stuff. I like stupid, like like people who are who know how to paint, and they then um, come to a next level to paint really naive and really stupid. That sometimes expressed more my. Yeah, 
I like to uh, laugh about everything or to don't take everything too serious. And does too much and that's why it helps sometimes to uh, remember nothing matters somehow. Everything matters but nothing. Um, nothing that so much or is that... Uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be so serious, yeah. Sometimes life is so complicated and to stay alive, to uh, be a part of society, to find your space, place and everything is about enough money to be lucky and I guess sometimes me and a lot of people forget um, yeah the, I don't know that's maybe complex to express in English for me what I mean but yeah actually I must say uh, Berlin is a bit like this before I lived in Leipzig and it's much more calm and chill small and um, this kind of atmosphere inspires me because there is nothing that inspires me directly. It's just to have the quietness that surrounds me. And if I have contact to my inner core somehow, then inspiration comes automatically. I want to create something. And if I'm in an environment of Berlin, for example, like I live in a very busy street here, it feels you like auto. play your music to stop listening the noise. <laughs> This could be an this could be an option, and but I also have to uh, close the curtains to not see people are rushing to work and um, are whatever like making money to be able to have some holidays and like to reward your lifetime you spent for something you reward for maybe yeah enjoying what for for me it was always like working for money and for. For the and then for the money, I bought myself free time to create some music. So this was my kind of holiday. Like I don't need to sing on the next day. So it was cool to live in Leipzig and to work in Berlin because Leipzig was cheaper to live. So um, and I did didn't need to think on the next day. I just could live in here now and do what I feel like I want to do, with no goal, no not the idea of being efficient or my music had to be efficient or I don't have to achieve uh, something. Yeah. yeah, that's a question. Do you play what you like to hear from your work or do you play and adjust and you you see to educate your dance floor or do you play what your dance floor is expecting from you considering the party, the club? Uh, the... I want to educate them and what, and at the same time, what I expect. I try to do what people expect. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, I guess, but but at the same time, um, every parameter is in between. Every aspect you summed up, you listed names. I like, oh, it's something between. Um, actually, I I sometimes. It's, if someone would play electro, for example, the whole night, I maybe would get a bit bored because um, it can feel really uh, the same track by track or it's just saturated. And sometimes it's cool if you get surprised by something different in between. And this is, I guess this is the way I like to do records or music, like certain variety. Um, I of of music I would be interested in, and, but the question was um, if you sometimes the yeah <laughs> um, sometimes I have in mind hmm, how would it how would it feel on a dance floor like if you DJ somewhere or played live then you have two or three days after this ex impression and when and if you are then in the studio you can somehow project. The track you are working on in the situation, maybe then you simplify the track. This yeah can be really cool. But I guess the coolest tracks have been the ones where I didn't wanted something like in a club situation or whatever. There was like I wanted to express something in emotional, maybe darkness or some sadness or melancholy or whatever and if i focused on this and not so much on how would it feel on the dance floor i guess it's the better ones 
Do you bring yeah. um, uh, music from your other projects in your sessions? I was listening to your sessions, mm -hmm. some of them as interviews, but I don't remember necessarily if I've spotted some of your side productions. Do you mean the New World stuff, for example? Yeah. Yes. Do you like um, the intro for the, I don't know, something? I would be, I would love to be so confident to integrate it because um, they maybe it would match for me and others would be uh, would feel disturbed. Um, oh, this is now too That's warm. Good, you create an impression. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but if you have like one or two tracks of this kind of super emotional disco music in between of dark. Electro music is. This, 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 I would love to get there to be able to uh, mix this in a way people can follow. Yeah, exactly. I think it depends on how you build the, the story and the path, and yeah. also again the environment, maybe also the type of, of audience. And um, yeah. brings me now to uh, the clubbing life. Uh, let's say because now you're in Berlin, right? Uh, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How is it for a producer to be living in Berlin? Do you have, do you feel distracted by the nightlife? Do you get distracted after parties, like after partying, and then you're like, oh, it's been three days. <laughs> I need to be waiting. <laughs> yeah. Um, Having as an artist, okay, as a DJ. So, because mm, you, yeah. you need to be more organized with time and with your. I guess I don't use the city as I could, as others um, do. Um, um, I don't feel like clubbing. I mean, I did it more often, but I'm I, I, first thing, I'm not so much a festival person. And second thing, I'm not so much into drug culture, like partying drug culture and clubbing. I mean, should be about music, but it's often what I recognize. It's really mixed, and um, and also it makes sense. I mean, to spend the whole night in a club, it's good to boost you somehow, and it's totally fine. But I guess I'm too sensible for it, or started too late um, to get in contact Better. with the possibilities. Um, so it's somehow in. Ah, being in a club can be really inspiring, but at the same time in Berlin, to me, it feels like everything is really settled. Like you have this club, you get what you expect somehow. And um, sometimes yeah, you always get like ready results. And sometimes in a small city, people are digging into stuff. And I, 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 my, how I remember Leipzig, for example, I was a bit more inspired by, uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's not there to, uh, to, to fill the space as, um, sometimes the club situation here feels a bit like, um, they want to fill and entertain people and also tourists. And if you want to live as a club, you have to uh, like every weekend, two days in the weekend, you have to deliver somehow. And yeah. it doesn't bring the best quality. It's just really quantity. And then if you want to go clubbing, you can take a pill and dance the whole night, of course, but then maybe it's, because of the pill and not because the music sure. really touched me or whatever. That's, yeah. I think we all agree with the drug culture and the clubs and stuff. But I do believe that if you are interested in music, you should give your uh, senses, your mind, your whatever is hearing the opportunity to filter it through your own, uh, I don't know, judgment. Again, how you yeah. feel. And then like clear judgment it and to actually be like, yeah, I like this track and then I'm going to like boost it and get to a higher level of, of enjoyment. The Ombra option, op opportunity to play there, this pushed me to expose myself on her. It uh, was you know, after you accepted the gig in Ombra? 
the work. And after I accepted, then oh. I guess Opera also asked for promotion and all this stuff. And then I felt I have nothing. And online, there's no documentation. So then I felt like I maybe noticed. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's good. That's why we have interviews, and that's why you're coming to Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You help me for getting some promo. Yeah, and then then I felt like maybe it's okay to overcome the step of um, being too shy to expose, and then it's it's also good to prove yourself. I mean, I look in your background there, and it uh, it seems like you've invested yeah, a lot of it. money <laughs> and work in your projects, so you should not be shy about it, right? I mean. You should, uh, yeah, be there, expose your your work, because yeah. as, as you can see, it has a great, uh, it's it's catchy, it's uh, people like it, enjoy it. You're gonna be uh, joining us uh, this year in 2024 with a, with a terrific lineup. So I yeah. think it's, it's a good uh, confirmation, let's say. Although I suppose and I hope you you had it until now, but it's good and for sure, more opportunities will show for you to reveal. Well, I mean, um, this this shyness. I mean, maybe there's a high um, expectation to myself, um, too high in a way. Of sometimes it's better to also believe in a kind of quantity. The more stuff you release or show people, the more relaxed you maybe get with expressing or like like putting it out. And like the chance you have a cool track in between a lot of releases also higher. So, yes, and consistency um, is key. Yeah. Uh, consistency mm. is key. First of all, for yeah, and consistency, yeah, consistency is or, also yeah. key for everything. What are your references as musical influences? It's a good question. I got really inspired in 2017 and 18. There was maybe I was more focused on it, or um, there was a different vibe. It was before Corona, I guess, and um, a lot of cool energy, music, and broken stuff raised and got released. Uh, there were, uh, I mean, sometimes I go through the catalog of a label and just buy records and a more visual memory, right? I, I, I memorize stuff visually. Sometimes I don't, don't know the artist, but I know the record. So it, I just know this track inspired me for some for some reason because it has something. And and if I see my Spotify playlist or or YouTube playlist where wherever I um um, um collect tracks I like. It, it's so different. So it can be chick disco from back in the days. Next time it could be all randomer track and not the current stuff. Um, more the yeah stuff he released on Lies, for example, and um, could be techno. It's it's kind of a combination. It's a collage of stuff I heard and got inspired from. So um, I wouldn't say I develop something completely new. It's my way of interpreting the inspiration. Yeah. And sometimes I, I, on the first Bitterfeld record, for example, um, there's a track. Like there's something from Human League. Um, I, I feel touched by and inside or from Underworld, Born Slippy and like, like three or four different tracks i felt like ah oh, and it is not i'm i try to put them together like a puzzle but when i made this track and listen to it ah there's this and this and this um element um it inspired me i mean i think this is yeah. how basically you create your your own line your own artist uh, style let's say because you have to take from somewhere you have to take a detail from somewhere or a story or whatever you know to be inspired and then you put your own accent on it your own uh, yeah. vision and then i mean uh, people look the same but everyone is a bit different yeah. and maybe it's the same yeah. with the music yes um, just music or a genre but with different inspiration and yeah the tools you have to express yeah 
uh, speaking of your background studio there, uh, so we were talking that you had to, to work to get your time to play music, like uh, in, uh, in brackets your your holidays, let's say, to be with your studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are just rewards for the work I did before. It was always part um, of being interested in creating sound stuff, and but. I guess 2010 or 11, when I got into this motion design, 3D design world and creating projects for customers, uh, clients, then I just, this was the first time I got money. And like naturally, I felt like, oh, Tempest, drum machine, I need to buy this. It <laughs> fulfills all my dreams. Back in the days, I thought it can everything, so I need to have it. And it, yeah, it was kind of natural to reward myself. Did you have any idea about production then, or did you just? Start... I had, I, I, I were just, um, I, um, the hip hop stuff, I started with Atari and a uh, sampler. Super cool, original. Then I bought a laptop, an Apple iBook, gave G4. 2003, yeah. then I got into Reason and Ableton Live. So I just produced into in the box and it was uh, never really um, felt super happy with the kind of stuff I produced there, I guess. And it was a lot of house music and deep house and two, yeah, what I meant, 2010 mm -hmm. music, um, what was coming there. And then I thought maybe when I have some machines, the music gets better. I, I guess a lot of people have these expectations. If I have this machine, it looks so, also the small picture of a Uno 60 in eBay, you get crazy. I need to have this, this looks so beautiful. It will fulfill my dreams of creating music. Then you are sitting in front of this expensive. You don't know where to huge... start. Hmm? And you don't know where to start. You're lost. It's so yeah, many it's a, okay. There are some notes. I hear something, and after sometimes ten years, for me, I got into it. This is possible. This is also possible. And I, sometimes it, it needs years to uh, understand or get into something. And the funny thing is, when I now see the machines, it looks like I bought it maybe three years ago when I felt like I want to do electro and all want to have this all authentic machines, but um, at the end I bought it 10 years ago or longer um, when I made house music and then I got into more electro stuff and now I happy, I'm happy that I bought all these machines because they interact um, well with the genre I know and like, ah, what, okay, now I have like controls. It's this kind of electro is like my goal if I would get there. Um, Would you like to share the stage with control? Yeah, this, or, or just uh, uh, join the, the, the um, um, visitors just to see what he's doing. No, the, the, the way of hybrid music. I mean, it's electroish, but it's also not broken stuff. And, and I have periods, and if I have, when I was younger, in the 20s or so, I felt more like I want to have this identity. Now I'm this, or now I'm that. And more and more, it's it's hard to I cannot stick on something. It's I, it's then I would feel like an actor. I'm acting that I am, and that you feel forced person. to stay in one in one line. You know, no, I'm that, and I have to have that lifestyle and that uh, friends and that group and that playlist. Yeah. And Some people feel it. it cuts out the yeah the naturality of it, right? And yeah. I think this was a thing before. Yeah, I mean, I think twenty years ago, fifteen. We all felt that we felt that we need to um, belong to a, a group of music, or that we have yeah. to um, show to people that we know that genre, that we're fans, and we live that genre. And we... but then I think music has become so music production has become so creative again. It was this boom, and now you cannot just say I like one genre or one artist or even two or three because it's. I mean, I think this is the beauty of it, not having a necessary line now, because it lets you be free enough to experiment and to let yourself, because 
I remember myself also, I was like that years before and I was like, I don't want to listen to X type of music because I listened to this ah. and I was like, I was yeah, like, it's, it's, yeah. It's and now I'm like, like just give them oh, no, to listen to everything, you know, just let them. Ah, then them. you feel guilty because, oh no, I, I love yeah. this, but I cannot listen to it. Exactly. It's not real, yeah. not my identity. So I would have to uh, leave my peer group or whatever. And it's kind of really, it's, I felt a bit with this house music stuff. So, oh no, I feel this electro. What now? I need a new name and I cannot, I I'm not allowed to. Do. And this is why also this interview's name came up. Um, it, it felt like, hmm. If it's just an interview, it's not about me, it's just about, um, um, it could be everything. Like, like um, it could be an interview of this or this or this, like I'm more open to it. It's a bit too deep, the explanation, but sometimes it, it feels like, okay, it's, 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 it's open for every kind of genre or expression instead of... Um, closing I, I it and... Destroyer, and then every track have to be like... Nowadays, it it would be a a, a pity to not uh, enjoy or to not to uh, explore or the all the musical genres that are here or yeah tools. like like, like um, explorer yeah yeah internet so, uh, explorer internet yeah. explorer <laughs> cool, <Wow. I'm>, yeah <laughs> that's very old in the history <laughs> very old. I feel like we're here since a while you had the you had the release planned and you didn't have the name. Oh my god. Oh, it was ready here, kind of, and then we need a name, and then there were sessions of friends throwing names, <laughs> and it was like fun, but at the same time, uh, everyone got so tired, and it's like I have to find it myself or through a person that I specially, uh, specifically trust into um, knowing you that better, that good. Yeah. And so a friend had this idea, FFR Fels, the guy who I recently did the split EP on Broken Toys, or he had also his own cool EP there. Um, he had the name, hey, let's take interviews, and yeah, hey, it's kind of cool, it's kind of open for everything, um, doesn't get any expectations. And at the same time, it's the shittiest name to find in the internet. Like, that's a bit tricky, yes, but as soon as you catch uh, the catch, <laughs> how to? Because I had some issues also finding you, and then I, I don't know, I, yeah. I how to search for you, and it's all a matter until you hit follow and you hit some likes, and then everything sums up, and then you don't need to find anymore. Yeah. Interviews. I was saying the name in different type of um, voices, tones. Uh, mm -hmm. And I actually got myself an explanation of why you, as an artist, as a as a producer, would like interviews and stuff. So I think it's quite also to the audience imagination. What's your name about, or uh, what it ah, expresses? Interviews, interviews, inter. I don't know. Ah, I don't know. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also like like internal views, like looking. Yeah, yeah. In I, I never thought on this, but I really like this aspect because it's all about this. I mean, it's, yeah. and, and if I have the um, environment or internal views of myself, this is actually the best. Um, maybe, yeah, yeah. The views, yeah, okay, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good. I understand it's quite uh, difficult to, to um, find or to create strong connections in Berlin. I, I quite hear this often, that people uh, would like to be more connected, but they're not. And that this is kind of a, the lifestyle over there that people are, okay, by nature that- it's Yeah, a, it's a really healthy lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, I mean, is, is it different? Is it, is, is, is it the Berlin situation or is it a big city situation? Maybe it's also big city effect. Um, and I mean, there are options of um, people to get in contact to, but sometimes it's also about yourself. I mean, are you interested in everyone? Are you um, interested every time? And Yes. And also, what are you doing? Do you like to go in a loud bar and 
having a drink every night and talk it's it's not really my world sometimes but um I, yeah it's 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 hard to um let it grow naturally the relations here and you have to make the efforts and to write people you have to be self confident sometimes hey what's up okay. and easy yeah just um, now, uh, while hearing you speaking about it, I think maybe this is yeah a reason because people here are uh, people in Berlin, for example. I I suppose I never lived in Berlin, so I just speak by yeah. Uh, but I think being a so club oriented city, and as you say, you want to go into a loud bar and do that and talk. People maybe don't mind that much other environments where to create connections like silent or parts. Though you have the park in Berlin. Yeah. And and it's very nice to stay there spending time but for example example looking at barcelona barcelona is also like have has a lot of underground places where you can get lost and just never see the sunlight but <laughs> happily that the weather and the nature and the position of the city helps ah, you this also brings you out of the darkness you a bit out. yeah yeah i mean yeah. i know a lot of like yeah we're in the underground community but i know a lot of people that like to stay outside in the air do interesting stuff i don't know maybe get in the nature you know uh, as yeah. contradictory uh, it would be with uh, the underground with industrial spaces and stuff but yeah people here tend to be a bit more connected but i think also it's it's the type of, of city that Makes it kind of it's too much concrete here and we have kind of nature the temple hover felt it's this old plane uh, uh airport yep. the abandoned airport it's okay to have but somehow it makes me depressive it's just a huge flat field it's interesting but if you are there it's windy you have no trees no makes you no sad yeah. hmm? makes you sad yeah yeah, it, yeah it's sad and some people here are like I love it. I'm so happy we have it. And and others who came yeah, from like more natural connected cities like Leipzig, for example, they're oh it's depressive. Yeah, the um, the beauty is here is maybe behind the walls somehow. If you have a look and a perspective into something, then sometimes I'm super surprised how beautiful some um areas here are and I, I suppose yes yeah. I mean, and also it's not that hot there so i think it's much more lush yeah 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 i mean this is also the thing like it changed totally in the in the summer here it's like yeah it's bipolar if you want like winter is like uh i yeah I'm 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 dying inside myself somehow. Like it's 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 killing your soul. The winter here a bit, or it can, and then the sun comes out. And what happened to myself? So why could I feel that bad? And um, because the sun comes out and some leaves on the trees, and then it completely changes. But the city at the same time can get overwhelming. At the same time, people get excited people and get out. happy, and it's like uh, agitation. Yeah, and it's, it's, yeah, it stresses you also, like, you have to go out, it's sunny, and it's like, you have just a three months until you get depressive again, so use this, and <laughs> maybe I don't want to use it, I want to chill and be inside also in July, maybe, and you need to get used to the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, I that's why I'm not there, living there, I mean, I'm I'm very good here, I come from Romania, first of all, so it's like, I ah. tend to go towards more warm places, and warm in ah. terms of people also, like, and I like sunshine. I like I'm quite of a sunshine person. Also, the warmness of people. If if people are able to give you some warmness and yeah. um, people who are stressed and like used to be st stable for your own, maybe because it's Berlin, it's a bit hard. So you have to stay strong by your own. Then um, um, sometimes yeah. more complicated to get this yeah warm interaction. I mean, it happens also here, but not as there for sure. I mean, it's it's, it's different mentality there here. Yeah. Uh, people are, yeah, have I don't know, different activities, different mindsets, and I see it also with friends that live there. They live from here, or they live from I don't know what uh, whatever other city, and I see changes, or they tell me updates, and yeah, 
I think I'm better here in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. I have never been in Barcelona, so so cool. Yeah. No, stay one week. But come cool. yeah. come two days before Umbra and leave five days after Umbra. <laughs> idea. I thought it to ah, cool. if you have yeah. the time, really. I mean you should better save than sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. No, no, no. Thanks for preparing me. I'm so yeah, I'm prepared for this world of party. Perfect. Yeah. I cool. Know. Okay. No, I'm much forward. <laughs> cool. Have a nice weekend. Ciao. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>